Thank you for your great introduction. Hello, everyone. I'm Hyung Sub. I'm a PhD student from Pulse Security Group at Purdue University. I'd like to introduce a new, new program, a uh, new automatic program repair tool. Its name is DigiPatch. So this work has been done with my coworker Asga Osman and my three great advisor Berkai Celik, Antonio Bianchi, and Dong Yanshu. Let me first e explain what is robotic vehicle. If a vehicle autonomously operate by itself, we refer to such vehicle as robotic vehicle. So nowadays, the use of robotic vehicle is dramatically increasing. You can find uh, submarine, sailboat, and drone, and rover. In this work, we focus on logic verb. Then what is a logic verb? If verb does not cause the program crash and memory corruption, but lead to unexpected uh, physical behavior, we refer to such a uh, verb as lo logic verbs. For example, when a sailboat navigates into a target waypoint, the RV control software calculated expected navigation path. However, a bug can make the sailboat deviate from the navigation path. We refer to such bug as logic bugs. Okay, then why should we pay attention to such logic bugs? When our research team was looking into more than 1,000 existing bugs in RV control software, we are surprised about two things. First, around 98% of bugs are logic bugs. Second, most of the logic bugs lead to physical damage, such as crashing on the ground or unstable attitude or unstable position controls. In order to find such logic bug, first we need to know what is correct behavior and then what is incorrect behavior. That's why in our previous work, we define such expected physical behavior in the form of linear temporal logic formula. Then we show that this formula can guide a fudger to discover new logic bugs in RV control software. In our previous work, we discovered more than 100 logic bugs. For example, a sailboat cannot precisely navigate into a waypoint without wind direction obtained from the wind vane sensor. That's why the documentation explicitly mentions such safety policy in documentation. So we can formally express this uh, safety policy in the form of LTL formula. In this example, this formula consists of two parts, precondition in green color and postcondition in red color. If RV's physical state satisfied precondition in green color, it means that the RV control software must trigger the behavior described in postcondition. In this example, the pre-arm check function must return error state. However, we find logic bug because the RV software initially did not implement such safety policy. Even though the RV's physical state satisfy precondition, this pre-arm check function did not return error state. Then our research question is that can we automatically fix such logic bugs? The reason is that there are so many previous or program repair tools. Unfortunately, they have many three li limitations to fix logic bugs because they are not mainly focused on robotic vehicle. First limitation is that mo most of them focus on fixing memory corruption bugs rather than logic bugs. Second, some of the tools can fix logic bugs. However, these tools require a user to prepare a complete set of test cases. Unfortunately, this is almost impossible because of their huge input space. The last limitation is that most of them leverage constraint solver. But as you might know, the constraint solver uh, so show the poor supporting for floating point type operation. Unfortunately, most of variable type in RV control software are floating point type. Okay. So we just realized that we cannot leverage existing program repair tool. But our intuition is that this uh, safety policy already explained the what is correct behavior and what is expected behavior of robotic vehicle. That's why our next research question is that can we reuse this formula to fix the found bug? 
Our answer is yes. So to tackle limitation of previous approaches, we suggest a new automatic program repair tool. Its name is BGPatch. BGPatch reuse existing temporal logic formula. There are two possible usage scenario. In first usage scenario, we assume the user already created an LTA formula to find logic blocks. In that case, pgpage take as input LTA formula and bug triggering input. Then pgpage create the candidate patch. In second scenario, we also assume that developer can receive the bug report from users. In that case, they don't have the LTA formula. That's why in that case, the PG patch requires developers to create PPL formula. In here, PPL formula denotes the PG patch language. The thing is that we realize that most of RV uh, software developers are not familiar with formal language such as LTL formula. That's why to lower difficulty of creating the formula, we create a new natural language like policy defined language, its name is PPL. Okay, overview of PG patch. First, we parse a given formula. Second, we match the formula's terms with a corresponding variable or the corresponding function in the source code. Third, we analyze how to access the mapped variable or the mapped function in the source code. Next, we generate candidate patch. Lastly, in order to verify the candidate patch's correctness, we learn test cases created by developers. However, if the candidate patch failed to fix a logic bug, in that case, PG patch try to modify the candidate patch. Okay, so from now on, I'd like to give you details of each component. First, parsing a given formula. So we convert a given formula to an expression tree. For example, this uh, formula consists of several propositions. So armed is first is one proposition of this formula. We assign each term as terminal load and verb as parents node. We also convert other proposition into the subtrees. Then we merge this subtree into one expression tree. Then we classify each term into three different types. First, the RV's physical states, such as roll, pitch, ya, and altitude. Second, the RV's uh, configuration parameter state. In this example, cell enable in blue color and wind vane type in yellow colors. Uh, these are all configuration parameters of logotech vehicle software. And last type is function or variable. In this example, the preamp checks is a function in the source code. Next term to corresponding variable or the corresponding function in the source code. In the case of function type, the matching is straightforward because the term's name exactly match with a function's name in the source code. However, what about physical state and what about the configuration parameter state? How can you match? This is the most tricky part. So to tackle this challenge, we leverage several heuristics. In the case of configuration parameter, we take advantage of this heuristic, how the RV software port configuration parameter from XML file to source code. The reason is that most of RV control software maintain their configuration parameter in the form of XML files. For example, in Arduino Pilot, when source code file lead a configuration parameter, they always call this function. So based on this uh, function's argument, we can extract the corresponding class, variable, and configuration parameter name. In this example, we can match the cell enable in blue color with a enable variable in cell both class. Next, in the case of physical state, we also take advantage of one heuristic. There are strict coding convention. The thing is that there is no any random variable in RV control software. Each variable's name must denote a physical state. For example, if I want to store a altitude physical state into a variable, in that case, the variable's name must include such keyword, altitude or height. Based on this uh, strict coding convention, 
we can match this armed physical state with the armed uh, variable in notify class. So, so far, we finished to parse a given formula and then finished to map the formula's term to corresponding variable or the corresponding function in the source code. Next step is we also need to uh, analyze how to access the mapped variable or the mapped function. In particular, because the mapped variable can be private member of a class. In that case, pgpatch try to find a getter function. This getter function return the mapped variable. In this example, the wind vane enable function return the mapped variable, the direction type. Next, we also need to identify how to call such getter function. That's why pgpatch try to a search how existing code statement calls such getter function. So we call the table on the right side as access parent table. PG patch will leverage this access parent table to create a candidate patch later. Next, it's time to create candidate patch. So PG patch will create a patch, a candidate patch based on this expression tree. However, this this version of expression tree does not have mapping information between formula and source code. However, this access parent table on the below contains such mapping information. That's why we switch the terminal load of the expression tree with the found access parents. So this version of expression tree finally contains the mapping information. PG patch will create a candidate page based on this uh, version of expression tree. Next step is we need to uh, decide the patch location. The thing is that we leverage different strategy to infer patch location per patch type. However, in this example, we divide this expression tree into two parts, precondition in blue color and postcondition in red color. But please uh, remind uh, the buggy behavior of this uh, sailboat example. The buggy behavior was that even though RV's physical state satisfy precondition in blue color, RV software did not trigger behavior described in post condition in red color because the RV software initially did not implement this policy. So based on this information, we can infer that the patch location can be this free arm check of functions. To generate the candidate patch, we conduct the in-order traversal of this expression tree. So this is a, a generated candidate patch. This patch code snippet is semantically same as the developer's one. So far, I just explained one patch type, adding a condition check. However, PG patch support five different uh, patch type. So if you are curious about other patch type, please check our paper. To evaluate PG patch, we deployed PG patch into three popular RV controls of there, Arduino, PX4, and Paparazzi. Then we randomly collected around 300 logic bugs from their GitHub repository, and then the reported bug from the RV forging papers. As a result, PGPath succeed in fixing around 86% of bugs. Okay, so evaluation result was pretty good. However, our research team was still wondering what if user feel a lot of difficulty of using our tool? In that case, user like to uh, manually fix a bug instead of using our tool. That's why uh, our research team uh, thought that, okay, then we can recruit uh, developers and users and then conduct a user study. As a result, we recruited total six RV developers and 12 uh, experienced RV users. In particular, one subject was an official Arduino developer, and these 12 RV users had programming experience of the RV control software. In this user study, we asked each subject to create five source level patches and five corresponding uh, formulas. This is a result. First, we count how many answers are correct. So as you see, when they created the uh, source level patches, they created on average two source level patches. On the other hand, they correctly created uh, 4.6 
correct formulas. It means that fixing bulks by using PG patch formula is much less error prone compared to manual patching effort. We also measure the time spending to answer each question. As you see, when, when they created the formula, they spent much less time than uh, manual patching. This is summary of my talk. Logic bug is a main bug type in robotic vehicle software. To automatically fix the logic bugs in robotic vehicle software, we suggest a new program repair tool. Its name is PG Patch. PG Patch reuses existing temporal logic formula, and it supports five different patch types. Also, our user study result show that fixing bug by using PG Patch formula is less error prone compared to manual patching effort. Thank you, this is end of my talk. I'm happy to take any question, thank you. Hello, nice talk. Um, thank you. So this isn't really a question, but more a suggestion. Mm -hmm. So there's an intersection between our community and the software engineering community, mm -hmm. which unfortunately don't they, our communities don't get along very well, mm -hmm. as evidenced by ICSI is going on right at this moment. And mm -hmm. so none of us can actually go to their talks. Um, so I'm looking at this paper and thinking that it probably it's a great paper here, but it probably will be even a greater paper at XE because there doesn't seem to be very much malice involved. So maybe I suggest that you try to enter, um, also try to interact with that community um, so that they're more aware of what we are doing, which increases your, um, the impact of your work. And also if they have any techniques mm -hmm. that our community isn't aware of, you can apply those. Yeah, thank, thank you for your comment. Yeah, actually we also consider submitting our paper into the software engineering conference, but we realized that uh, attacker can take, uh, exploit such logic mm -hmm. That's why we decided to submit our paper into security event, yeah. Right. <laughs> thank you. Okay, so uh, I dumped a bunch of questions for you in there too. Um, so I guess my, you know, I have a couple of questions. My, one of my main questions is, you know, we, we build a lot of software and it's not cost, cost effective to, you know, do formal methods, formal verification, because, you know, it's just too much, right? You, you know, your toaster can't do something that's terrible, I guess, too terrible um, for now. But, um, you know, at what point do we say, okay, this drone stuff, because your work is kind of in between, right? Software engineering, right? It's this, you're, you're doing all the specification. It's a lot of work. Yeah. So, you know, what's the difference between this and say building a formal model and actually, because you have a specification, so there is some type of formal model, mm -hmm. and using a more kind of standard formal methods approach to doing this type of work? Uh, I think, yeah, you have point because the developers are not familiar with this formal method, such as linear temporal logic formula. But that's why we created a new, uh, natural language-like formula, PPL. So based on our user study result, they feel, lost, feel uh, less difficulty when they created formula then. Also, actually this, uh, I don't include uh, such uh, the developer's feedback into paper and slide, but we received quite uh, positive feedback from developers, okay. yeah. Yeah, that's actually one of the interesting, yeah. the, the thing I'm most interested in is, is right, this is a high, you know, requires a lot of expertise, right? And so I wonder if, you know, to, to integrate this and scale it, right, do you have to have a specialist that's a part of these robotics, you know, teams or, or anybody that's de delivering this type of product? And, you know, how the developers would accept somebody that specifically says, hey, for reliability, we want to actually have this type of modeling. Because mm -hmm. it seems like you need it really specifically for each kind of context or each yeah. different robot, because you have yeah, to define yeah. all the states. Is that true? And then how acceptable would they be, or acceptable would this be to the community? So, so in developer, developer's point of view, so they need to thoroughly write down documentation. The reason is that even though I, I'm developer, but I'm just devolving into a specific part of the robotic vehicle software, for example, device driver. It means that I don't have any idea about the control level algorithm like this. That's why documentation is really important for developers. That's why the 
existing the roboting vehicles of this, such as uh, Arduino PX4, they already uh, have the such detailed documentation. Yeah, that's why when we conducted the user study, so we also recruited uh, users, just normal users. Yeah, they quite well create the uh, yeah, formula based okay. on the documentation. They were able to create formulas. Yeah. yeah. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. that's exciting to hear. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I'll, I'll be interested to hear a little bit more. Yeah. Um, all right, let's all thank our speaker for the great talk. Thank you so much. Thank you.